Welcome back to another episode of the Event Buzz Podcast. Our guest today is going to be a little different from the past event experts I've talked with in terms of experience. We will be going from the center stage of planning to behind the scenes, someone responsible for capturing the magic. Daniel Hess, filmmaker, writer, and founder of Two Tony Productions, will be joining me to discuss his experience as an event videographer, his background in large-scale events, and things that can make or break how your event is captured. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing this morning? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm actually really excited to talk to you today because I actually majored in media arts and film. So I'm I'm super familiar with the world of filmmaking and I love my job, but I do miss it. So I added an intro for you. But before we get started, um, could you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself um, and how your company got its start and maybe if there's a story behind the name? Yeah. So my name is Daniel Hess. Uh, yeah. In 2009, I started uh, Two Tony Productions while I was still in college, uh, majoring in film. Um, and it really got its start kind of from, you know, just being a typical college film student, needing a, a, a name to put behind everything. And I noticed a lot of uh, classmates and friends were kind of just you know, whatever their name was, that was kind of the name of the production company or something like that. Um, and I wanted it to have some kind of meaning behind it. So Two Tony Productions actually comes from um, my cousin, who we were really close growing up. His name was Anthony. And when he was 14, uh, he actually passed away from cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And I was 10 years old at the time. So it was a big thing. You know, we were really super close. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I just had this epiphany while I was sitting there trying to think of things. And I thought, you know, why not, if the goal for everything is to have like kind of a deeper meaning behind what I'm doing, um, mm -hmm. then why not have that start with the name? So, you know, two Tony Productions is sort of like a, a dedication, like for Tony. Um, but I had to have some alliteration because I love that too much not to. Yeah. Um, so. So, yeah, so that's sort of where the name and the company comes from. And it's been good because it always kind of keeps me grounded and mm -hmm. keeps me thinking of trying to do kind of the the best that I can do with uh, every production that I kind of walk into. Yeah. What an amazing tribute. I really like that. And it gives meaning behind your company, like you said. And where are you guys based out of, actually? Uh, so we're in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, gotcha. And so for your company, you kind of do events around the area or do you ever travel? Yeah, we travel like I travel all over. I'll go up to, to D.C., Northern Virginia, Delaware, uh, P.A. Um, mm -hmm. I've even gone up as far as uh, Connecticut for, for weddings before. So gotcha. No, That's no, fun. No stranger to the travel. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And the type of events you guys do, I know you're involved in weddings, but are there any other other types of events you've been involved in? Yeah, so I've done um, different like local sporting events, like smaller scale, you know, like high school sports, uh, things like that. Um, I've done, you know, just corporate events as they come to town, like, you know, especially in the pre-COVID days when you'd have the big uh, business mm -hmm. summits and stuff like that. I've covered those type of things. Um, and outside of that, you know, every every now and again, like I've done, you know, some small like film premiere stuff for like local, like creative uh, artists and things mm -hmm. like that, too. So, yeah, a little little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. I like that. <laughs> um, so when you first messaged me and you first um, started talking, you mentioned that you've been on sets of some events that were pretty, pretty bad um, when, when it comes to the planning. Uh, could you elaborate on this? Because I thought that was funny. <laughs> Maybe some. <laughs> something about the planning that made those events not so amazing that you can recall? Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes it really, uh, the biggest thing I've seen, especially with weddings is like, I always think there is reason to have a coordinator if you're going to have like a, a bigger day. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I mean, actually just recently, like about a month and a half ago, I was at a wedding and they were two hours behind. Um, everything because they didn't have a coordinator they didn't have a planner and what they did was they had two ceremonies throughout the day and they had a limo taking them back and forth from the ceremony location to the hotel and back again mm -hmm. and it was just one of those things where if you would have had a coordinator maybe they would have stepped in and said hey instead of constantly going back to the hotel 
maybe we can work out something where you can get changed at the ceremony location because it was a semi hotel itself. Yeah. Um, so like little things like that, I think people kind of miss uh, when they're trying to do it all themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but even sometimes with coordinators, it, it can be tricky. Uh, I just find that really when you're trying to, to condense down so much of a day, uh, you know, there needs to be some leeway. You know, I think when you're really trying to knock it down to like the exact minute, that's when you're running into issues because mm -hmm. we're, we're human. We're not going to, yeah. you know, make it at, you know, when 315, when the, we're supposed to have our first dance is like, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> and, yeah. and if you're not giving yourself that little bit of wiggle room to say, okay, well, 315 is when we want to, but like, even if we're doing it at 345, four o'clock, like it's all good, you know, cause we mm -hmm. have those gaps of time. Um, That's and then just, funny. yeah. And then just kind of being, uh, accepting of it. Cause I've seen it too, where people are just like, when they get behind, they instantly start kind of getting flustered. Um, and I think you just have to realize that like the worst thing that's going to happen is maybe the end of the night, you, the dance set gets shortened a little bit or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I don't know if you're like a friends fan, but I remembered at the episode where like Monica is the coordinator for, I think. Um, I think it's like Phoebe's wedding and she's just like that where she's like, okay, this time 415, <laughs> let's go. And th everyone's just like, what? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I feel like that advice can also work beyond weddings at any other events too. Like you definitely need that one person or a team of people, honestly, that are helping mm -hmm. coordinate the day. So whoever's the host or behind it isn't like stressing, but also giving yourself that time for mess ups and hiccups and anything that can go wrong because it, you're never going to be able to be like, okay, 215 this. And then right after that 11 or um, 345 this, like that's never going to happen. Exactly. But that's good <laughs> advice. And then we have for videographers listening, if we went beyond weddings, are there, is there any like tips you can give when it comes to filming larger scale events for them? Um, I mean, I found that just through, especially with video, like, the the more you always want to have at least a two person team for mm -hmm. most events um and on top of that like you you got to go just multi camera with like setups and things like that you know there's you're not going to capture it all with just one even two cameras sometimes isn't enough um so i've found over the years that it's just like you you got to set yourself up with like a team um and you got to have like the the equipment to sort of back that up and really like different cameras are going to lend themselves better to different types of events. You know, you, if you're doing a sports event, trying to use a DSLR for that is, is just not going to happen because it's just not designed to, to, you know, zoom in and out and capture yeah. all the action really quick, uh, where you need like something that's more just going to be, you know, a, a handy cam or a prosumer type camera that has like the rocker to kind of zoom in and out. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so just kind of like knowing what the event you're trying to cover is, is going to determine like what equipment you're going to need. And then regardless of that event, like you should still have at least another person, if not a few more, because it's just going to get so crazy so fast. And then that's when things get missed, which is, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a videographer, that's the last thing you want to really happen. Yeah. So when you do events, you at least go in with one other person, like almost every time. Yeah, yeah, if I can help it, there's going to be another person. I mean, sometimes the, the budgets are tight, but like, you you know, that's that's the part that you kind of got to work out with the client to say, hey, like, I know we're trying to swing for this, but like, if you spend, you know, maybe like $500 more or something like that, it's going to be exorbitantly uh -huh. better on the on the back end of everything and just look much better. Yeah. And do you have any suggestions when because it can be I mean, I've done this before, it can get a little frustrating working with other people if you're not on the same page or you know what I mean um do you have any suggestions when it comes to like team collaboration on on a set oh well I think it's like really it, it comes down to before you're even kind of like walking into the situation mm -hmm. um I've always found that like a, a good phone call or at least a good series of emails to really say hey this is like what we're trying to do mm -hmm. this is what we're going to need you know, are there any issues on your end or any questions you have for me? Because um, the more you can just outline that before you're going into it, the better things are going to flow um, mm -hmm. because everybody will be on that same page. And, you know, inevitably, like things do come up 
and that's going to happen. But as long as you have that good foundation, you can kind of work around pretty much anything that's going to pop up throughout the day. Um, mm-hmm. And you might even have some semblance of like figuring that out just through a conversation with someone because sometimes because you've been doing it for so long, maybe you're overlooking something that they're like, hey, you know, I saw at this time we're doing that, but like, aren't you supposed to be here or something like that? And, you know, you actually come up with a better plan just because you've had that conversation. Yeah, I do think um, when working with a team, there always has to be that one person that's a little more of a, a leader figure or calling more of the shots or else you have two people butting heads that think like they're both ideas are amazing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's a good tip. And since so we have a lot of like event planners that listen to this podcast, do you have any suggestions for them when the roles are reversed and they're looking to hire like a videographer or someone to capture their event? What do they look for? Because there are a lot of options out there. I mean, the internet is full. You type in videographer, I'm sure you're going to find a list of people. So what attributes do you think or would you recommend that they kind of look for when scoping out the talent? Um, I mean, I would say, you know, for me, if I don't know who the person is and I'm trying to look for somebody like it kind of almost starts with like the website and the web presence. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like if somebody's out there and their website's maybe kind of badly put together or, you know, you see some of the videos and they're not looking too great. uh, That's sort of your first kind of maybe red flag as to to not want to go with a certain videographer. Um, And then just, you know. I think the next step is again, kind of maybe having a conversation. Uh, you know, if you send this person an email and they don't get back to you within at this point in, in the way everything works within a couple hours, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of a, another red flag. Um, Cause I know, you know, when I'm with it, it's just like, you're there, you're, you're getting the email, you're sending them back as soon as you can. Um, so I think like really looking out for somebody who's going to is communicating with you well is sort of, maybe jumping on the phone call really quick and and sounds like, you know, they know what they're doing. And then, you know, maybe asking about like what equipment they use or things like that. Even if you don't know it 110%, if they're kind of walking you through everything they have and it all, you know, because I mean, let's say a certain camera, you can just do a quick Google search. And if it's like something from uh, 2009, (laughs) there there might be a little bit of a a problem with uh, how the quality is going to end up. Yeah. So you, I think just little things like that, just having a good conversation, making sure you're looking at their work. I mean, because even if you can't find it on their website, like having them at least send you over some kind of samples, I think that's really vital because um, that's really going to gauge what you're going to end up with at the end of the day. Um, and then, yeah, that, that conversation is so key because you want to really make sure you're going to like gel really well with somebody because um, I've seen it from all aspects of the event video an event world where it's just sometimes I've worked with photographers who just think they're like the king of the castle for the day and (laughs) they're really tough. And I've seen it on the video side too. Um, So I think like you can kind of start to surmise, like maybe that's the approach that this person is taking and you can kind of decide if you want that or if you Mm -hmm. feel like maybe that's a little too much uh, for what you're trying to do. Cause it is, it's a team effort for everybody. Mm-hmm. And maybe check out their reels or if they have anything like, you know, on YouTube samples, because too, they could be amazing, but then also if they don't match your brand or how you want, like, you know, their style, mm-hmm. I think that's really important. There's everyone's style, everyone's style is so different. So looking through their video samples to make sure that that's how you want, that's how you want the layout done. Cause it's probably going to be similar to how they end up presenting it. Exactly. And have you, I mean, since we've um, had this last year and a half of, you know, virtual events, you have experience with virtual events now and streaming? Yeah. So, uh, you know, in March, everything sort of just stopped. And uh, by the time June came around, uh, I actually worked with a pretty solid team of people. And Mm -hmm. uh, one of us in the group got all the live streaming stuff put together. And by June, we were able to start doing that. And, uh, you know, even now, even just two weeks ago, I mean, we're still doing some live streaming for people uh, for for weddings. And then the crazy thing is, I mean, you know, not to dampen the mood, but I mean, we did do a lot of funeral live streaming last year as well. Oh, uh, I wouldn't was, even think about that. But I know so many people that actually missed funerals. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
so yeah we were it, you know it's 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 a tough day to film but i mean mm -hmm. you know it was important because i especially early on i mean you really couldn't have that many people in these spaces mm -hmm. and so it was it was an interesting time but um yeah it was it was great to see the feedback because it, it was able to keep people so connected Mm -hmm. Um, so like, it was very rewarding in that sense that, you know, after we would do the events, the amount of just like thank yous and, uh, outreach from people that we would get was, was pretty remarkable. Um, yeah. and it wasn't I, with today's world. It's not that, I mean, the setup is so easy compared to what it was even just five years ago that it just was kind of a no brainer to, to jump into it. And did you, any mistakes you might've made along the way that you could kind of <laughs> give people tips or suggestions on so they can avoid? Uh, I mean, the earliest stuff was really just figuring out like, okay, you know, what's, what's the Wi-Fi going to be like yeah, in the location? Exactly. Like, so really asking those questions, like, Hey, do you have a Wi-Fi router? Can we hardwire into your sig, like your wife or not your Wi-Fi, but your internet? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just taking that next. So that's sort of the next iteration of conversation to have. If you're going to do live streaming is really mm -hmm. just figuring out what that's going to be. And where you're at too. I mean, because you can bring out out your own routers and stuff like that. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, it's it's gonna just be really tough to have any kind of uh, service out there. So you just have to be aware of those certain things. Oh yeah, have you ever done any um, streams that were kind of tough like that, where you were like out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, I mean, we've had to do it where you know the the signal was so rough that it was like we were using you know like we have like a little MiFi type card, mm, okay. but then we were also like tying our cell phones into it all and i mean we we're still only getting like i think five or six megabits mm -hmm. per second so it was like it was there's, there's there were some tough ones like that um but you know luckily with the the way the streaming works and everything you can set the quality kind of lower to sort of make up for that um so there's a lot of leeway that you get with everything again mm -hmm. which was kind of hard to come by even just a couple years ago yeah. And do you ever go, do you ever go on site like beforehand just to see how it's going to be with that? Or it's just always when you get there and you're kind of just figuring it out? Um, if we can, we definitely like to do like a, a site survey beforehand because mm -hmm. that way you can, you can pull out the laptop, you can sort of test it, uh, just do some, some quick run throughs and really get a feel for it. Um, so yeah, so if, if, if there's time for it and it's not too, cause some of them like last year, it would be, you know, we get a call Tuesday and they need something by like Thursday. So it'd be mm -hmm. tough to do it then. But yeah, if there's the time frame, definitely want to do a site survey because that way you can just feel out any of the hiccups or, or things that you might run into because mm -hmm. you don't want to be running around on the day of trying to figure all that out. It can get stressful really fast. <laughs> yeah. And then on site during like when you guys are filming, especially if you have a team, are you guys communicating through like walkie talkie headsets or how does that work? Um, yeah, so it's usually the walkie talkie route works kind of mm -hmm. the best. It's like a little like the connected into the headset type of deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, that just makes things way easier because then, you know, if I'm running the camera, I can know, uh -huh. like, hey, like back off a little bit or zoom in on that a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it just makes the day so much smoother when you're just using the little headsets. Okay. Yes. Oh, this is all bringing back so much memories because I used to be a, like part of some like film teams in college and it's so fun. I enjoy it. I enjoyed it mm -hmm. so much, but it is, it's a, it's a lot. If you, I, I didn't realize it when I started doing it. It's a lot of work because you, like you said, you don't like the worst thing is missing that one thing on exactly. film, especially if you have multiple people and you miss it. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> now we look now we look really bad right it's like can't can't just say hey can you do that again real quick no <laughs> yeah so it's stressful but it's fun and, and i enjoyed it and that's so fun and i mean i think that's i just wanted to talk to you a little bit and of, for videographers but also our event planners that were looking you know might be looking for people to come out and film their event mm -hmm. because film is good. event the event industry and film is growing so fast because you like you said we have streaming now People don't want to miss it. YouTube and I mean, video is just like the preferred method of communication right now. So exactly. even if you did like little clips of your like highlights and stuff, you know, it's all good. Yeah, I mean, it's just like and a lot of times now it's, you know, if the budget isn't super high, like a lot of people will just do the ceremony, you know, just come out mm -hmm. from the ceremony, mm -hmm. send it out to everyone live. And, and then that's kind of it. Um 
because yeah, it's just it's it's just made everything ten times easier, and the expense can kind of go out a little bit because you know it. For one thing, you know, of course, everything that happened last year, it was hard to travel. But I think now people are realizing that, like, it's just easier for certain family members and the yeah. cost is just a lot less, you know, because yeah. you don't have to fly in and, and take all the steps if you don't want to, if you don't have mm-hmm. to or want to. And is there just out of curiosity, is there a certain like a uh, streaming platform you use or? Um, so mainly uh, it's really been through Zoom. It's, oh, it's, okay. It's, it's really kind of the most uh, in tune with the uh-huh. streaming because it, it can automatically kind of like teeter the bandwidth. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas like with YouTube, it's obviously a, the more prevalent platform, but it's actually a little more taxing on like the streaming devices and everything. Because mm-hmm. um, you can go kind of like lower quality with YouTube when you're sending the signal out, but they still kind of want a pretty good bandwidth signal to start with. So it's actually been, yeah, mainly Zoom. And then the other nice thing about Zoom is if you're playing like copyright music and stuff like that, like Zoom, obviously, it's, it's since they're not hosting anything, doesn't mm-hmm. really care about that. Whereas uh, YouTube will like, they you, you can get your video flagged or it can get removed oh, right okay. after it's done. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're fighting that kind of uh, okay. thing too if, if they're playing songs from like top 40 artists <laughs> during the ceremony or something. Oh, okay. I did not know Zoom. It Zoom does everything. I didn't know it streamed too. <laughs> mm-hmm. You just basically change like the like what I'm doing right now is like it's connected through like an OBS type of thing. Oh, and gotcha. It, okay. it just basically makes it look like oh, this is the computer, and but it's you're really using like a, a nicer camera oh. through like a converter. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I was like your um. <laughs> You look great. I, yeah, I don't what? have the most amazing webcam ever designed. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is a great setup. Mine does not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was doing uh, online classes for a little bit there, and I was like, you know, if I'm going to do this, I might as well get the the nice setup going and just have this in the home office. So, uh huh. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't even think of that. Okay, and then I guess my last question or um, piece would be. Again, for like people trying to break into the video world or becoming a videographer, if you have any tips when it comes to starting out and like getting their foot in the door and trying to get noticed by these events, whether it's weddings to larger scaled events like conferences. Yes. I mean, so for me, my entry point was actually through a a photographer here in the area and uh, he wanted to add video to his services. And I was doing that for a little bit. And that really kind of showed me the ropes on like not only what the events entailed, but also like the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, you know, trying to find someone that can be like a mentor type is always great. Uh, I was lucky that I had a couple of those when I first started out and it taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, But even without that, I mean, it's really just about kind of like starting small you know, maybe a friend or a coworker or something that like a day job is is having an event and you say, Hey, like I'll do it for pretty cheap. Yeah. And and that can be like your starting point. Um, so just kind of like I think it's really about just having that like drive to just kind of keep pushing with it. Um, because you know, if you do that, then the next thing you know, it's like they might know somebody else who's doing a bigger mm-hmm. event or something that leads to another opportunity. And I think you'd just be surprised that like the more you just kind of put yourself out there, the the better you can kind of do with uh, mm-hmm. finding events and sort of building up a business if that's what you want to do. Yeah, it's all about connections. At the end of the day, like you could do ads, you can do all this paid paid stuff. But at the end of the day, it's word of mouth is like the, literally the most powerful thing. And 100%. who, yep, who you know, who they know you you could go for a while um and not put anything on the internet and they could just keep referring you and that's it so yep yeah you you can you certainly can you know really kind of push yourself really hard with that and Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay well i think that's all i had for you and thanks for i mean talking to me on monday right after a busy weekend so (laughs) i really appreciate it (laughs) Total pleasure. I did not. I don't know why I didn't realize that. I was like, wow. It was. I made him meet with me on a Monday after. <laughs> no big. This is just a chill out day. Anyways. Okay, good. No big deal. <laughs>